Last week, we were hanging out in Carlsbad, San Diego, California at the Hub SeaWorld Research Institute with an industry icon, Bill Shedd, and Mike Shane, who runs the Institute. What an absolute learning curve just hanging out for a couple hours with these guys. I was able to understand the entire white sea bass objective from start to finish. Today on Stoked on Fishing, we're wrapping up the hatchery with Mike, and then we're going fishing for a few days to Catalina Island with Jock and Charlie Albright, two guys who are big CCA supporters and volunteers that help catch the broodstock white sea bass. Oh, 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 it's a monster! <laughs> oh, you got a big fish, look at him. <laughs> all about this, don't I you? I love this. This is <laughs> Stoked on Fishing. My name's Shay Mack, and this is Stoked on Fishing. Yeah! Stoked on Fishing is brought to you by Akuma Fishing Tackle, a global leader in design and manufacturing of high-quality fishing tackle, and by Grundens, delivering on 100 years of performance apparel for the avid salt and freshwater angler, and by El Dorado Sport Fishing, 85 feet of deck space for fishermen who want to have some fun in the sun and catch some fish, and by Stoked on Fishing Charters, fish the local islands and offshore banks out west or join us on one of our many adventures around the world and by Suzuki Marine offering the west coast the ultimate choice in outboard motors. So the brood stock that are swimming in these tanks over here are come from the wild. They're wild caught fish. Uh, we actually go out and working with recreational fishermen uh, to catch those fish. We hold them in a pen offshore at, at Catalina Island so we have a special on the boats that go out there, hook and line, just go out there, catch these fish, put them in holding tanks on the boat. The boat transports them back to our holding pen and we hold them there uh, until we can go over on a larger boat. And usually it's an albacore uh, boat that will bring them back over alive. And then we transport them here to the hatchery. And eventually after a quarantine process of about three months or so, then they end up finally coming in indoors to the tanks inside and mixing with our other brood fish. Once we start a production run, the fish are on our facility here for about three to four months. So they move through different systems. Uh, at about three months in age, we then end up tagging those fish and then they go outside to raceways where they spend another couple weeks up to a month before we then transport them off site to grow out pens. Now, Mike, what is uh, this tent now? What do we have here? So this is uh, 72,000, about 80-day-old white sea bass in here. So, I can see the little guys. Wow. Yeah, there's a lot of, a lot of fish here. Good water flow exchange. It's hard to see. It's a little dark in here oh, right I now. Oh, I can see them. can see them under the feeder there. Yeah. And... So how we transport the fish to the grow out sites. Um, actually, these fish are only three to four inches in size at three to four months. Um, we then have transport tanks on a trailer that we tow the trailer to various uh, volunteer based grow out sites up and down the coast. So we have two tanks on the trailer. Each tank is 400 gallons. Uh, so we have certain densities of fish depending on their size that we put in those tanks and then we'll uh, take them to a grow out site. Uh, where they'll then be uh, sluiced into the pen, typically, and then they're held for several months uh, at the grow-out site until they get to be about eight inches, eight to 10 inches in size, and then they're released right there at the grow-out pens where they either drop the nets or open the doors and let the fish go right then and there. And Larry, what were you just telling me about? That, uh, that we have a very small pen, pen here compared to some of the big, big net pens. Uh, however, our success rate is very large. It's usually uh, 98, 99% uh, survival rate. That's due to our controlled environment, so, uh, which we have a lot better control here than you do a large net sitting in the ocean or in the middle of a bay. How do you know that success rate is, is is high in the 90s like that. Oh, because we, we, we count every mortality because they're easy to see. We usually lose three or four. That's out it? Of the batch. Yes. All right. Well, well done, Larry. You're doing something right. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so currently we have nine different grow out pens up and down the coastline as far north as Ventura, all the way down into San Diego Bay. We, most of those pens are seven of them at least are operated by grow out volunteers. These are volunteers that have created their own nonprofits and have uh, the funds and have built their pins to take care of them. 
And then we operate two of the pens, one right here in the lagoon at the hatchery and the other is out at, at Catalina that I talked about earlier. So white sea bass uh, are considered ocean, uh, near shore coastal pelagic fish. So meaning they run up and down the coastline. They can, you know, I mean, they've been seen as far north as southeast Alaska, all the way down almost to the tip of Baja. They move around a lot. Our tag fish have been, you know, seen uh, as far north as, as Monterey, released here in Southern California, and 100 miles off the coast, off the Cortez and Tanner banks. Um, are, are where our sea bass have been found that have been released from this program. So success and how it's, we look at it for this program is that we've been hugely successful in advancing the scientific understanding of how you grow a white sea bass. We've shown that you can grow the fish, you can release them, you can tag them, you can recover them. So we actually are now, this hatchery has been a role model for marine fish hatcheries worldwide. People that are interested in volunteering for this program, they can contact us uh, by either going to our website at hswri.org. You can call the hatchery here and we can put you in contact with somebody. And our number here is 760-434-9501. Or you can scan the QR code on the screen to get more information on how you can volunteer to help grow out white sea bass at one of the volunteer grow out sites. Thank you so much. Thanks. You're welcome. And that concludes our white sea bass hatchery schooling with Bill Shedd and Mike Shane in Carlsbad, San Diego, California. I can't thank those guys enough for taking the time to explain how things got started and where they are at today. Absolutely incredible. Now it's time to do some fishing with Jock and Charlie Albright, two gentlemen who have put in decades of their time to help catch the broodstock white sea bass for the hatchery. Time to get schooled again. Let's go fishing. Buenos dias. <clears throat> Interesting trip going on here. Sea bass hatchery stuff. Um, and I'm fishing with some of the best white sea bass fishermen on the planet. So we're gonna go over for four or five days to Catalina Island and see if we can catch some white sea bass. I'm just gonna zip my lip and let these guys talk. These guys are the professionals and I'm not when it comes to all the sea bass stuff. But the store line's awesome. So here we go. Another adventure on Stoked On Fishing. It's all about white sea bass. Where are we headed? We're going to, uh, we're heading out to Harbor and we're going to head up to uh, Long Beach to pick up some squid that's waiting for us at Nachos. First things first, got to get that bait, right? Got to get the bait first. Okay. And from there, we're going to head on over and drop off some feed for the small fish at Cat Harbor and then um, go out and go fishing. So how many years have you actually been doing this? Oh, I'm almost 34 and probably since I can almost walk, so oh, well. probably about almost 30 years. So I am hanging out with the right guys to do this. <laughs> We've done it a couple times. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Long time then, right? This isn't, this isn't your first rodeo doing no, this? No, we've been doing this since 1993 when the program first started. Now, this, again, I asked you down there, this is volunteer work, right? This is totally volunteer. I mean, every one of these grow up pens um, in Southern California are manned by a, a uh, volunteer team. JD. JD's big game and tackle. Who's this right here? JD. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. You got it? Uh, JD's big game tackle.com. Okay, what does he do there? Uh, he gives fish reports, he li listens to the radio and uh, gives his report on what he hears throughout the day because not all of us can listen to the radio. So no. he's been doing that for a long time, oh. right? Well, probably before Decades. I was born. <laughs> <laughs> this will be your third trip. Um you it'll be the boat's this month. third trip. We try and do this every year when the hatchery uh, asks us to. And is it usually around June, May, June? June is, is typically the, the month that, that uh, the majority of the migration comes through, and so that's uh, when we try and get out there. So the part of our program that we try and accomplish is catching these white sea bass in shallower than 60 feet, with the max being 70 feet. Uh, they're very sensitive fish, and uh, their air bladders will inflate, and it's really hard to get them uh, back from that and uh, get them in the net pen swimming again. So a lot of our fishing is actually in like 40 feet or less of water. Uh, we fish a lot of beaches. Uh, we do fish a dropper loop. We're using circle hooks. 
Uh, but most of our fishing is, you know, rod in hand, casting lead heads with squid. So, you know, it you're, is. Okay. you're changing your bait quite a bit. Um, just like you would a sardine, you know, tuna fishing or something. Um, and it's, you know, very active fishing, you know. A lot of sea bass fishing guys will do on bait grounds or uh, deep water spots or kelp edge uh, off a reef or something. You know, they're dropping, dropping loops down and just sitting and relaxing yeah. and walking and waiting. Uh, but a lot of our stuff's kind of almost active fishing, like almost for largemouth bass, that kind of stuff. Engaged. You know? Yeah, long days, but you know, it's a, lot, a lot of casts for that one fish, but you know, it can get hot real quick and catch quite a few. Well, we do have a permit. We can keep uh, any size fish um, in any quantity. Um, but you know we have a limit because they're 100 gallon tanks that we're putting them into so it depends on the size of the fish and you know, we want it, we want them to stay alive we're not trying to overcrowd them just because it's a good bite we want those fish to live so yeah uh, we'll, we'll call it at a certain point and deliver those fish of the tank you don't want to overfill it because obviously just like fish squid need oxygen so uh, don't overpack them also it makes them uh, mate quicker and die quicker so trying to find the right balance of yeah, especially when we're going for a few days yeah let's do one more pass what we'll use this afternoon the squid's a priority right John this is top priority. <laughs> we don't fish if we don't have bait. Well, that's what you said. We're not leaving until we have squid, right? <laughs> right. Okay. Okay. Thank you, guys. Thanks, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, good way to start getting lucky, huh? Always From the bait lucky. man? Yeah. <laughs> that's Hooking lucky. us up. Yeah. Thanks, Nacho. Guys. Appreciate it, buddy. See you, Thank you, Nacho. Always oh, nice when Nacho says you got lucky. We, he, they just got bait today. Thanks, bait guys. Appreciate you. Thanks, Nacho. Appreciate you. And away we go. All right, that's a wrap, right? We're off to Catalina. We're off to Catalina. White sea bass will wait. Yeah, we're fishing tonight, right? Fishing tonight as soon as we get there. Okay. straight up and down when they're on the bow that way they never end up under the boat or tangle with anything behind us so go a little heavier then go heavier yeah keep them straight up and down and then you alternate depths on the rods because we have two in the front two in the back so you want some like right on the bottom some a little off the bottom some way off the bottom so not all the same not all the same because those fish are in different depths different levels of the water
See you, buddy. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. So, Doc, our goal is to be on dropping as much fish off here as possible. Is that the name of the game? That would be nice. Yeah, okay. that's what we're going to try and do. And we're starting here within uh, the next half hour to an hour? Yeah, let's go up the island a little bit, throw out some lines and see what we can do. Okay. Chad, you get this clean for what? Do I get... So, oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, well, <laughs> once, we, once we hook a fish, land a fish, they're going in the tow. So it's going to be a flow through system. They're going to have fresh water running over them. And the goal is to get these fish back to the pen in about an hour. We're doing an unroll. Yeah, that's a big banner. So we put these on the side of the boat just so that everyone knows what we're doing. And if fishing game sees us in an area where like they're not supposed to be regularly, they'll be cool with it. So, okay. Yeah. Uh, you find it harder? things you look for when you when you're dropping that anchor are you looking well you want to make sure that, that you're not dropping on any rocks that you might get hung up on but that's a first yeah yeah and it's, it's just a matter of, of getting in tight to where these fish might be hanging out so and every spot's different some spots take an uphill current some spots don't need a current some spots you're looking for um, a color break Especially come down east, looking for those color breaks. Yeah. Always looking for a current, you know, that's, that's going into the kelp. A little mini. That thing's got to be fun. <laughs> a little giant. Pumps over the side. Yep, all right. I see you guys getting in your slickers. Yeah. Ready for. Is that game time? <laughs> it sure is. What are you doing, Charlie? You going right to fishing? Or you... Right to fishing. Okay. There you go. <laughs> That's what he wants. Right you ready? Zone. All right. Let's go. Right after you got bit, right? Yeah, you said I, I got, got hammered. I got throttled. Yeah. So we're just checking to see if it already has a coated water tag. Make sure that had three fish. Nope, he's good. Hit tag in him so that we can identify him. We we'll bring him back to the hatchery later. Just one, 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 four. four. Yep. You're good. Chop it. Awesome. <laughs> Very cool. Okay. Water depth. Gotcha. Okay. Great. Well, is that one of the fastest starts yet? Or is sometimes pretty close. Nope. <laughs> well, nice spot there, Jock. Right out of the gate. Yeah. <laughs> it works. <laughs> I see uh, you've got braid right there, braid to fluorocarbon, or? Yep. Okay, what's your fluorocarbon? Uh, I think this one has 30, 30, 50 braid, kind of kelp cutter rig, pretty standard. Okay. See that's what you're Three eighths lead head, just bouncing it on the bottom. Three eighths? Yeah. 
you can go first, Pat. I'll sit right here and get some of these so you're just doing a slow reel back. You're casting no, down yeah, just reel. Keep, just... The, keep the bit down towards the bottom, mm -hmm. but just off the bottom. Just a slow reel back, or you can lift it with that reel a little bit. Oh, oh. Nine hip shakes. Calico. My kid is pretty calico. Stay off. <laughs> Alright, game time. Uh, I'll take a spray. So, when you get those taps, sometimes it's going to be a perch or something. Mm -hmm. I compare it to like a pack of hyenas that just took down a gazelle, right? And then the lion comes in and takes it from them. Yeah, yeah. That happens a lot with perch and any type of fish chewing on your bait. So, if you swing too soon, then you're going to pull your bait right off the hook, then you're out of the scenario. The bite happened, the taps. And you pull up, and if that pressure's there, then you know that you, that's you when have you a swing. Calico, a halibut, a sea bass, a yellowtail, then you swing. But if it's just tap tap, and you can pull it away, then it's not something big. That is some one on one right there. Thank you for that. Salmon, butterfly, the crown inside. Stepping up. Oh, there's something. Any head shakes? I would know. I have no idea. <laughs> I think so, though. I think, or. Barracuda or? No, it is, a, it is a sea bass. And that right here, bring him right here, right there, and voila. We can do this. <laughs> All right, ready? Charlie, that was money. Exactly what you said. Exactly. A little tick, 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 tick. And it just loaded up. What a way to get our broodstock white sea bass adventure started. Getting schooled, then catching fish within our first hour of fishing. Stoked. Next week, our Catalina journey continues as we get in some good fishing with some solid white sea bass and some really fun bycatch.